The headlines, BLP March draws 1,500 as the IMF says the economy appears to have turned the corner. Former nursing home employee appears in court on assault charge and Villa join UWA at Netball's Summit. Welcome to Nation News for Thursday, May the 19th, 2016. Thanks so much for joining us. Opposition leader Mia Motley managed to attract just about 1,500 people to the March for Justice. She fronted through Bridgetown and up to Bay Street, near where the Prime Minister Frendel Stewart and his ministers were meeting. Many of the protesters wore white, as Ms. Motley requested. Some carried placards, protesting water shortages, job losses, and the reinstatement of a 10% cut in MPs' salaries. Placards read... You don't know the Dems must go. Why should we lose our jobs and them keep theirs? And no layoffs, them lie. Political activist David Comishan was among the marchers, though he announced that his tiny political movement will be fielding candidates at the next election. The march began at Parliament buildings and ended on Brown's Beach, where Ms. Motley spoke. She said the march was to emphasize the power of the people to keep the government in check. And when we ask you to walk for justice, it is because our country needs healing. Our country is being broken. Our spirit is being assaulted. And we, the people who have inherited the legacy of Grant Lee Adams and Errol Barrow, must stand tall and say not in this land that the power of the people is always stronger than the people in power. The International Monetary Fund says the Barbados economy appears to have finally turned the corner. But in a news release issued after its latest mission here, the IMF cautioned that the country continues to face serious challenges with the deficit and debt, even though growth has returned to the economy. The fund expects economic expansion this year of just over 2%, which is a few percentage points ahead of the central bank's forecast. It said, however, that Barbados may not reach its full potential without deep-seated reforms to align revenues and spending and reduce debt. The IMF confirmed that the government's fiscal program has yielded less than expected and that cash requirements are being met increasingly by the central bank, the so-called printing of money. The nursing aid charged in the care home mistreatment case has been granted bail in the sum of $3,000. 37-year-old Ariel Odingo King of Lynch's Tenerife St. Philip faces a simple assault charge. She appeared in the District A Magistrate's Court. She was captured in a cell phone video which appeared to show her physically abusing Jasmine Hall, an elderly nursing home resident. Ms. King is due to appear at District C on Monday. The central bank's deregulation of interest rates at commercial banks has led to a drastic drop in rates to the consternation of savers. However, the removal of the cap on rates offers an upside for credit unions, according to economist Clyde Maskell, offering them a chance to be more competitive with banks. He was speaking at a public forum hosted by the UWI Credit Union. I'm not so sure that I'm in favor of a total deregulation of deposit rates that would allow commercial banks to almost set a rate and give you anything as a thing. And then the spreads, oh, the, uh, no, the spreads are huge. I've written about this. Can you imagine moving in from 2.5% interest on deposit to only 0.5%? It's an 80% reduction. And then can you imagine what you can make in terms of buying at that price and selling at something slightly higher? It is, but for me, I think this is the key. Um, the credit unions can actually become more competitive in this environment um, by offering something even better than what the commercial banks will offer. Because remember, their motive is profit. Your motive, our motive, is to try and enhance and promote our membership and do whatever we can. When unions put forward a proposal for a pay increase, it is usually for the years ahead. But the National Union of Public Workers is actually after back pay for the years public officers have endured a pay freeze while the economy stagnated or declined. The 23% pay rise proposal represents 
the years 2010 to 2015, the financial years, and would cost the cash short government $180 million. Acting General Secretary Delcia Burke, speaking after the NUPW met with about 250 members on Wednesday, said the figures were based on inflation, the rising cost of living, and other factors. Ms. Burke said the union sent a formal proposal to government in January, but though there has been some back and forth, they are yet to get a final response. January, um, January 13th, submitted proposal. Uh, we received a response from the government on the 18th of March asking for further clarification. And on the 31st of March, we responded giving that clarification. We had asked for a meeting to be set up to discuss the proposals which we submitted. Today, we have not had a meeting, nor we have not had a date set for it. The NPW is desirous of writing the Ministry of the Civil Service by tomorrow and I'm requesting that we begin negotiations next week. Failing which, we will come back to our members and determine what an Anglican priest wants a strong national message sent to criminals that their misdeeds will be punished. Canon Wade Isaacs was delivering a sermon on Wednesday at the St. George Parish Church for Veldine Hines, the fatal victim of a stray bullet while traveling in the back seat of a van on Barbary's Hill earlier in the month. Those who bring guns illegally into our country those who rent guns to people to commit crimes, or those who hire people to do the hip jobs, are worse than the persons who commit the crimes. These two must be pursued by the law and be brought to justice and feed the full weight of the law. And all of us must give the police the support they need to bring a stoppage to this nonsense which is taking place in our land. Poland has opened a consulate in Bridgetown with business executive Michael Armstrong serving as the European nation's representative here. Speaking at an inauguration reception at George Washington House, Mr. Armstrong, the honorary consul general, said he planned to work on building relations in trade, tourism, education and culture. I therefore intend to use my involvement with each of these sectors to identify and progress the opportunities that can be beneficial to both in the short and longer term. My commitment is such that I have commenced initial discussions pertaining to trade and education with the relevant parties of each from a Barbados perspective. It would be remiss of me not to mention uh, from a trade point of view that a Barbados company, Automotive Art, commenced a strategic and successful joint ownership business relationship with a paint manufacturing company in Poland in 2012. So the opportunities for further trade development has been planted. In sport, Guardian General Pride of Villa have rejoined UWI Blackbirds A at the top of Netball's Division 1. Villa scored an impressive 52-37 win over Blackbirds B on Wednesday night at the netball stadium. Captain Latonia Blackman continued her sublime form, sinking an impressive 42 goals from 48 attempts, while her sister Nadia Blackman added 10. Villa have won all their three games for a maximum of 15 points, the same as Blackbirds A. The joint leaders will clash next Wednesday. And finally, four lucky competition winners are set to be the first people in history to use the Eiffel Tower in France as a vacation home next month. Rental company HomeAway is taking over part of the first floor of the iconic 300-meter landmark for the duration of the European Football Championship in Paris and transforming it into living quarters. The competition opens Thursday for the chance to stay in the famous monument which provides panoramic views of Parisian landmarks. Brian Sharples, HomeAway CEO, called the move unprecedented and said it was guaranteed to provide the most epic vocation memories of a lifetime. And that's Nation News for Thursday. For more news, log on to nationnews.com and follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And remember to pick up your Weekend Nation on Friday or subscribe to our e-paper.